All right, everyone, thank you for uh, giving us a few extra minutes to get everybody uh, to finish uh, getting registered in. Uh, thank you again for joining us at today's AutoCAD MAP 3D 2013 uh, Building GIS Attribute Data in MAP 3D. My name is Lawrence Vaughn, Government Solutions Specialist here at CAD1. I'm also joined by the well-known well Ge uh, Warren Geisler, our Geospatial Technical Specialist uh, here also at CAD1. And before we get started, I do want to make sure that everybody can hear us, uh, make sure everyone can hear us uh, throughout the presentation. We're broadcasting uh, out to everyone. So if you would please, on your right hand side, your task pane there, raise your hand to let us know that we can, that you can hear us. That is great. Okay. I, for most of the people are raising their hands. I appreciate that. Thank you. So I'll go and lower everyone's hand. So thank you for uh, letting us know. And, and also, uh, one other question. We did have one poll uh, question uh, here, and we did want to ask that uh, before we get started so we had a better idea of who was in the audience. So that question is, what version of MAP 3D or Civil 3D are you using? If you're using uh, your, the current version, which is 2013, uh, 2012, if you haven't upgraded yet, 2011, uh, or anything earlier, just let us know that. And, uh, We'll give it a couple more seconds and we'll close it out and we'll share the results here. Well, so a few people probably not paying attention or probably asleep or something <laughs> like that. Okay, I am going to go ahead and close the poll. So for those of you who didn't get a chance to answer, maybe you didn't want to. And I'll share that just to show everybody who's here. So it looks like most of the people here are still using the 2012 products. Some of you are using 2011 or earlier, um, and then good, 20, about 20% of you are on 2013, but at least the 2012 and 2013 products. Um, so that's good. Thank you for uh, giving us that information and uh, sharing that with us. And also on this task pane here, you guys see on your right-hand side, I did forget to mention that this is where you do submit and ask questions. So please feel free to do so during the presentation, and we will uh, go ahead and stop the presentation as we go and answer them uh, when time permits. Yeah, so in that area where it says ask questions, please feel free to do so. If you want to really try to get our attention, you can hit the raise your hand. Uh, Lawrence is going to try to monitor that. And, yeah, we've already got our uh, first question <laughs> in from Mike. Is Lynn Allen here yet? No, Lynn Allen is not here yet. And what Mike is talking about, and we'll have a slide at the very end of the presentation to talk about this a little bit on June 15th, uh, we are going to be hosting our Customer Appreciation Day. And we will be sending out a lot of information about that here uh, within the next week. We are setting up a website, uh, a landing page for everybody to register at. You can email us. We'll be doing broadcasts. Hopefully everybody's gotten an email or something that says save the date for June 15th, which is a Friday. Uh, we'll be having a Customer Appreciation Day. We're going to have Lynn Allen here doing a couple of her talks. We'll also have Pete Southwood, who is uh, Lynn's counterpart in Civil and Geospatial, giving a talk. And uh, we're going to have a couple of uh, Revit specialists, uh, the head of a, the Revit Users Group, inter, the International Revit Users Group, I think, is going to be showing up to talk about uh, some of the Revit things. And then during the day, uh, we're going to have other events going on, tips and tricks, showing people some new technology. We're going to be hosting uh, lunch and... Um, snacks during the day, breakfast and lunch during the day, and it'll be a great opportunity to come see everybody, uh, say hi to everybody, put a face to the to the voices or the names and all of that. Okay, so back into in our presentation. Okay, so the this has been kind of a popular presentation that I've uh, been giving about once a year, and it follows along the heels of questions that were constantly getting asked. Uh, everybody knows hopefully by now in AutoCAD, that you can uh, have blocks with block attributes. And, and attributes and blocks are just editable information that you can attach, like uh, the cost of something, the manufacturer of something, etc. And the question that we've been getting asked for years, can you put this kind of information on any other AutoCAD object? Well, if you've got Civil 3D or if you've got NAT 3D, then the answer is yes. So we're going to talk about adding an attribute information. So what is attribute information? It's just extra data of any kind, really, that you want to attach to virtually any AutoCAD object. 
Now, when I say that, you'll see the second bullet statement in there, attach any AutoCAD entity, because one of the limitations that I'll show in a moment is that it has to be an AutoCAD object, line, arc, circle, text, blocks, etc. Those of you who are using Civil 3D won't be able to attach this extra information to Civil 3D objects like pipe networks, surfaces, etc. Uh, hopefully, Autodesk Labs is working on something like that, and they'll, they'll have it at some point where we can add extra information to that. Uh, you can add in any number of attributes to any object. We can build multiple tables, multiple listings of these attributes, put in as many as you want to. You can add extra attributes, remove attributes, edit them at any time. So that's one of the benefits as opposed to, say, block attributes, which, yeah, you can add and remove attributes from blocks. It's just a bit difficult. This, as you're going to see here, it's pretty easy. So. Just to give you kind of a sample of what it is that I'm talking about before I jump into the next slide. So let's talk about what I'm talking about here. I've got AutoCAD objects. And as you see that I'm going to show you here, the objects that I've just got in my drawing are just plain AutoCAD objects, lines, polylines, blocks, etc. Now, as just a regular AutoCAD object, typically we can see things like the line type, the layer, and all of that. And that's about all we can do with it. Well, with AutoCAD Map 3D, we can add in a handful of extra attributes, any format, virtually any name that we want. So at the bottom of my list over here, you're going to notice that I've got a couple of what are called attribute tables in here. And the attribute tables are specific. This is a, a, a waterline project, so the attribute tables would be specific to the water lines. It doesn't really matter what I call the tables, what I call the attributes, or what I plug in there. Think anything, anything that you all are drawing or drafting that you want to add extra information to, you can do that. I just wanted to show you that in this instance, I can have different tables. So as you see there, I built a table specifically for the water mains and the information that I'm attaching to it. Now I've got another one there for maintenance. Uh, you can have another one in there for installation. You can have as many tables as you want, as I mentioned before, any amount of attributes. So we can uh, plug in what type of attributes that we want, what type of text that we want to throw in there, add in those attributes. As an example, this guy right here, Currently, let me go back to that, is say a six inch PVC line. Uh, maybe somebody made a mistake and it wasn't really PVC, it was ductile iron. So I can come in at any time just by using my properties window and edit this information. So as you see there, I can type in a different value, I can edit it, I can plug in any of these things that I want. So again, what is the attributes? What are the attributes? Well, in um, Map 3D, and this goes with Civil 3D as well, we've got a feature called Object Data. And if you're using one of the later versions, which hopefully you are, you'll find this in your Planning and Analysis Workspace. Under the Create ribbon, you will see a uh, Attach, Detach Object Data tool set right in here, where once I've built the object data, I can grab this and I can say, look, here's the, date, the table that I want. I can list as many tables as I want and I want to use these tools right here that I can attach it to any object. So if I wanted, if I had 10,000 lines in here, I could just say I want to attach this, I could grab them all, just you know, green window or whatever, and attach all that object data with defaults, etc. Um, inside the Map Setup ribbon, you'll see under Attribute Data here, we have got Define Object Data, and this is where you will define the information that you want to start attaching to your objects. I'll give you a quick overview of this. So I'm going to click Define Object Data. I want to click New Table. So remember, as many tables as you want. So if I've got a utility plan, I can have a table for each one of my utilities. You know, sanitary, water, storm, electrical, etc. So let's say in this instance, uh, I want a different table with installation information. So I'm going to call this one, well, I'll just call it Water Underscore Install. Now, we are limited, and you will get a nice uh, warning from, Auto, uh, from the program from AutoCAD. We are limited in the number of characters that we can use. There's no spaces allowed, that kind of thing. And you want to be a little bit careful of this, and I'll talk about this in a moment. As far as naming things, a lot of people like using the 255 characters, spaces included for naming everything. Well, one of the things that I'll be talking about in a little, little while is how do you share this information with other people? maybe other GIS organizations, cities, counties, states, townships, etc. for submittal. 
So let me get rid of that. So I've got the water install in here, and all I have to do is add in one or more fields, just like you would with a block attribute. So I'm going to say the first uh, field name is going to be um, install underscore date. You'll notice the types of information that I can put in here. Integers, characters, points, or reals. Most of the time you're probably going to want to use characters, but if you want to do some type of mathematical value on it, I'll show you how you can do math operations on these. You want to do either a real or an integer so that you can do a greater than, a less than, an equal to, etc. And a point really would just be an XYZ coordinate. But anything that's going to contain characters, text, etc., you're going to want to do characters. So I've got the description. I think that the field name is pretty descriptive itself, and I don't type too fast. And then we've got the default. I, one of the things I like showing people is that when you plug in a default, and this is really good for block attributes as well. You know, when you're doing block attributes, when you're doing this type of attribute, give everybody a default. Even if it's not a default of when the date was, give them a default of the format that you're looking for. Because like when you think about install date, how many different formats are people going to be typing this in? You know, a thousand different formats. Uh, January 1, 2012, 1-1, 1, 1, 2012, uh, Jan 1, 2012. So that there's a whole bunch of different things in here. So in this instance, my default might be something along these lines. And that, as people go to fill it in, they're going to be able to see that and go, oh, that's what the person is looking for. Okay. That's the first one. Maybe I'm going to do the uh, manufacturer character. This one wouldn't have any kind of default, but I like plugging something in anyway just to say, hey, if I do a scan of my drawing and I see any of these uh, you know, quadruple X's or any just single X's, whatever type of default you want to throw in there, I'll know that somebody didn't get to that. It's real hard to do a query on a blank value. But if I put in a handful of X's like this and I say, show me all of the lines that, would, that have five X's, then I'll be able to see that pretty quickly and easily. So you just keep plugging this in and plugging this in. Hit OK, and I've now got a brand new table. So as you see here, I've now got three tables, and I can build a fourth and a fifth, etc. When I want to edit any one of these tables, all I've got to do is pick the one that I want, go right back in and modify. A couple things that you can't do that you'll notice in here. Can't change the names. I can pick this. I can change the field names. I can change the, the formats, etc. You may or may not be able to change the character set, or the type, rather. You can always go to character from one of the numeric values, but if I started out as character and I try to go to integer, I may get an error message. If somebody's already plugged in a letter somewhere or an inch sign or a foot sign, I won't be able to do that. And then I can rename these if I want to a different way and then delete them if I want. So really pretty straightforward about creating those object data tables. And as I showed you a moment ago, as I was coming through here, all I've got to do is come into my Create tab, choose Attach Detach. There's my water install. I want to say Attach to Objects, zoom out, grab everything, or if I want to cheat in AutoCAD. Remember, in AutoCAD, you want to grab everything in the drawing. All you've got to do is type in All, A-L-L, -L, and it'll grab everything not on a locked or frozen layer. And I've now added that table to all of my objects. Grab any one of them just to see it. Scroll down to the bottom here. You'll see I've got water install now, and I've got the install date, the manufacturer, and I've got the water mains information already plugged in there, and the water maintenance. So I can keep adding, removing, subtracting, etc. from this. So Warren, we did have a question come in here, uh, and maybe it's uh, we're a little further along, but the question is, can can this be used for crossings? That be used for cross. I see that from Julie. Um, well, I, I see what you're talking about, uh, Julie, but if you're talking about civil 3D objects again, I've got to stress, if you're talking about civil 3D objects again, uh, don't try to add attribute data, this type of attribute data, to civil 3D objects. If it's just plain AutoCAD, yeah, you can put this on any line, art, circle, and text. Now, I know, having said that, if, you, if you're going to want to go into civil 3D, create some object data, start attaching it to pipes and things like that, uh, and you may actually get it to sit there for a moment or two, but let me tell you, save yourself the time and energy. The first time you go to edit those objects or change them or rebuild your surface or do anything to them, it wipes all of that attached object data. When you attach the object data, it's as you're going to, one of the limitations that you'll see here is that when you attach object data to something, that object has to stay the same type of object all the way throughout. 
when you rebuild a surface, you're basically wiping it out and refreshing it. The same thing for pipes and all of that. So, first questions, you know, attributes, what are they? So hopefully I've answered that question. It's just an extra piece of information, data, text, anything that you want to attach to any AutoCAD object. And you saw how easy it was to create those. Okay, now let's talk about some of the limitations. As I mentioned before, you can attach this to any AutoCAD object, but not proxies. And by proxies, I mean civil 3D objects or some of the objects that uh, the Express tools create, like the ArcAline text. Anything that's a proxy, you will not be able to attach this to. Okay, another limitation. This is lost if the object changes. What? What do you mean if the object changes? Okay, so I'm going to try to be clever here. So I've got my line here, I've got my line here, and somebody says, well, why don't you just p-edit, you know, turn those into a polyline. Poly so if I go to p-edit this, it says, do you want to turn it into a polyline? Yes, and I'm going to join that to this one. And I'm really happy I've now got one nice big long polyline. Look over here, look at the list, look at the bottom of the list. I changed the object type, I've lost the object data. Same thing holds true in reverse. If I had attached the object data to a polyline, and then I use my least favorite command on the entire planet, explode. I hate that command. So if I explode that back to lines and arcs and circles, then I'm changing the object type. I've lost this. The only way to get it back would be to do my undo command. And that's the reason that it has such a hard time attaching to proxies, is because those object types realistically change every time you do something to them. You, know, you add in a, a, a valve or something onto a pipe network and realistically you've now broken that pipe network down and you've changed it, had to rebuild it. So it's similar to blocks with attributes, if you explode a block with attributes, you um, get what? You just get you know, text or the attribute, the blank attribute values. And yeah, I know somebody's going to say, well, what about the burst command? Can you use the burst command to pull the attribute values out? No. This attribute information is attached to the object. There's no good tool for pulling it out. Now I'm going to show you how to label it so we can label the objects with those values and you can still explode all of that, but let's just be careful with it. Naming. Okay, like I said, you've got really good options to name it. I think um, in AutoCAD, because this is kind of an old feature, you can name your tables something like up to 20 characters in length and your field names can be something like 18 characters in length or something along those lines. But here's the, here's the trick, everyone. At some point, you're probably going to want to share this data with somebody else. You're going to want to export this data into a shape file to give that to someone or, uh, you know, to, to submit to someone. Shape files are very limited. Names, any name inside of a shape file is limited to 12 characters, no spaces. So if you think that you're going to be sharing this with anyone, you're going to be exporting this or trying to build a GIS or, or uh, uh, send this over to your Esri folks and they want a shapefile, you've got to be really careful. Um, in, in the best case scenario, when you try to export it, the program's going to truncate it for you. So if it's more than 12 characters, it'll just chop off the ending characters. Worst case scenario, you're going to get an error message, they can't import it, invalid fields, invalid yada yada yada. Now that doesn't mean that only means the name. So when I come in here, the name of my table, the name of my attribute, not the values. The values can have you know, a thousand characters. It doesn't, well, I don't know about a thousand, but the values can have as many characters as you want in there, but the names, that's what we're really looking for. And again, sort of like Civil 3D and these other programs, these are map tools. These are not AutoCAD tools. These are not AutoCAD LT tools. So what happens when somebody with plain AutoCAD gets my drawing, or AutoCAD LT, they get my drawing, and they grab that object? They will not see the object data tables. You have to have Map or Civil 3D in order to see the object data tables and the values. Now, even though they can't see them, the information is still embedded into the object. So as long as they don't goof it up, like exploding things or any of that, uh, you know, p-editing, joining things, then when you open up the drawing again, all of those values will still be there. Okay, what other uses do we have for these attributes? Um, actually, before I get into that, let me show you a couple of tips and tricks about these attribute values. A lot of people will ask me, okay, so I, I've spent 
you know, a couple of days building the attribute tables. I've got them looking really good. This is, this is how my boss wants it. These are the values that my boss wants. Great. How do I get those attribute values into another drawing, or, or at least those tables into another drawing? Do I have to open up another drawing and do this? Do I have to put this into a template? Putting it into a template is always a good idea, but you don't have to because realistically all I've got to do is go into a drawing that has them, use my control C, yeah, whoops, ding, 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 control C down here, copy clip. Now that I've done the copy clip, I'm going to start a blank brand new drawing. Now I'm going to go in here under attach detach object data and down here at the command line it's letting me know there are no tables in this drawing. Well, yet, so I'm going to do a paste. I'm going to paste that waterline into the drawing. Pasted the waterline in the drawing. Guess I don't even need it anymore. Pasted the waterline in the drawing and I just erased it. Now I come back up to attach detach object data. There are all my tables. So handy little tip for everybody. A lot of people say, I would like to use object data, but I don't want to have to rebuild these tables every time. There's nothing in the documentation that talks about how to copy these object data tables. You know, even in Civil 3D for your styles. We've got styles manager. We can copy styles from one drawing into another. But there's nothing in the documentation that talks about how to get these tables from one drawing to another. Well, there it is. There's the little trick that you need. Just attach the tables to an object. Have that object available. Heck, you can even build it as a block and put it on your tool palette and insert it. The tables get built every time. Really pretty easy. Pretty easy and straightforward. Okay, so uses. Where was that? Uses. Labeling. Back into AutoCAD. Labeling. Let's talk about that. So this is great. I've got all this object data attached to these features in here. And now I can grab them and I can tell more information about them. Great. That's functionally useless. I can see them. Nobody else can. Great, Warren. You just showed me something I can't use. Well, not really. If you come over in Map or in Civil 3D under your Annotate tab, you're going to see a, a, a panel that's called Map Annotation. And when you use this map annotation, you can start by defining a template. The template's basically just going to say, I've already got one built. It's going to say, okay, what layer do I want my text to go on? What insertion point? What scale? Hey, what does that look like? It looks like we're creating a block. And you are. The program's going to create a quick block with attributes. And the attributes are going to be filled in from the values inside your object. So the program's going to do that for you. And edit the template contents just to show you what it looks like. And those of you who have built block attributes are looking at this going, wow, it looks a whole lot like, a, like block attributes, if you ask me. Okay, so there I am. I'm, I've got all of my information in here. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you how to build this, but this is in the online help system. You can learn how to edit, how to build this. You can edit the annotation text. This is the tool that you're going to want to use, by the way. A lot of people say, okay, I've got all of this nonsense up in here, all of this. Where, how do I do this? As soon as I do, as soon as I come in here, you're going to want to hit edit annotation text or just hover over it. There's my favorite thing of these new versions. You just hover over it. It says, okay, that's the name of the command. You hit F1. Three hours later, your online help comes up or shorter. But your online help will come up and it will tell you all about how to build these. But it's really pretty straightforward. If you've ever built block attributes, very, very much like this. So you just plug those in there. Now, once you've got that in there, you've got that template, you can have as many templates as you want in here. I want to show this text. I want to show that text. So once you've got all of that in here, it's really pretty easy. Whoops, did you drop? Oh, it dropped something. Okay, I'm going to, it's pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and hit this insert button over here. It says, which template do you want to use? And like I said, you can have as many as you want. I have five templates. I choose which one that I want to use at any one time. I'm going to hit insert, zoom out. Or I could type in all. Now, since I may have a large drawing with lots of different uh, resources in here, lots of different layers, I don't want to type in all. I want to isolate just the waterline layer. I'm going to hit insert. And there you go. So you've got all of that information as what looks like text. Now, these are blocks with attributes. So if I double click this information, I'll see that these are blocks with attributes. So I can give them to anybody with plain AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT. They get to see this information. If I want just text, they could use the silly burst command and burst this down to just text. But as long as they're blocks and you leave them alone, all of this information 
can be updated in a semi-automatic manner. Somebody comes in here and grabs this and goes, no, that line's now over here. It's now way longer than 25 foot was a moment ago. I'm going to come down in here and I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to change it from duct line. I'm going to change it back to PVC because that person was wrong. So I've changed all that information in there. Inside my map annotation, I've got a couple of neat little toolbars, refresh existing annotation, I get delete annotation, I get update existing annotation. It says, which template do I want to use? Hit that. The program says, do you want to update? Do you want to discard any of the changes or do you want to retain them? I want to retain all my changes. I hit enter. If I had made a thousand changes in my drawing, all 1,000 of these objects would have now moved, snapped back into place, and you see that now the values have updated. The length of the line has been updated. The material of the line has been updated. So it's really pretty semi-automatic. Now, it's not quite as cool as the civil 3D stuff I know, where you just move the line, the labels keep updating and changing. But really, um, the nice thing about this is, as opposed to the other programs, is, like I said, I can add this to any AutoCAD object, lines, polylines, circles, text, etc. When I do the labeling, the labeling comes through as something that I can share with anybody. These are block attributes. Heck, I can even give this to somebody with uh, Esri products, this drawing just as it is, and they can pull those values out using some of the Esri tool sets and attach them to the lines as they're doing their import. So this is really pretty nice. It's very, very flexible. Very nice because it gives me AutoCAD objects that I can work with. Okay, what was the other one? What other uses do we have for it? Okay, I thought that was a pretty darn good use just by itself, but we've got another one. It's called theme mapping. Now, if you've been in my webinars before, you've seen me open up the uh, state of Colorado, which has all the counties, and we go into the city, and we've got parcels, and I've done um, uh, color-coded maps of, uh, I think one of them I had was the zoning, and the other one I had was land use. It's all color-coded maps. We call those theme maps. So, you can do that with AutoCAD objects as well. You can build a theme map out of lines, arc circles, and text and say, hey, I want to theme it. And I want to theme it based on one of those values. So that's all I did over here inside my display manager. As I said, I want to create a brand new theme with that um, AutoCAD drawing data. So I just said, hey, out of the AutoCAD drawing data, I want to query the current drawing for all the objects on this particular layer. I've added it in there, and I've built a theme for the pipe sizes. And, of course, now it's not going to work. See, and I was prepared. I did this just earlier. Let me edit the theme. Let me show you the theme. So when you're building the theme, what you can do is I've got the range of numeric values. The program says, where am I going to get those numeric values from? So I broke into that database table, the water main, and I said, there's a size. I can even tell it to ignore values, like if you find a zero value or a null value or somebody didn't type it in, I want to plug that all in there. Once I've done that, I've got these values in here. I can tell it how many ranges that I want. So as you see here, I've got multiple ranges in here, color-coded them all. And for some goofy reason, the program just isn't going to play with me. Boy, don't you just hate it when that happens? And it's broke. Okay, so I won't be able to show that one to you, but trust me, by clicking this, just work with your imagination, because earlier today when I was goofing around with it, I did this, and I was goofing around with it then too. But all of these are going to be changing colors for you. Something I broke something when I was goofing around with it, I think. So we've got all of those. We've got theme maps. We've got color-coded maps. So we've got the text labels in there. We've got the color-coded map information in there. Okay, what else is it good for? Uh, the next one, exporting to GIS. So I want to start building my own database, or I want to export this and get it to a city or a county or a state agency. I can export all of that information and hand it over just as is. Come to my Output tab, and you'll see now if I want to 
build my own database. A lot of people have asked me this, uh, and I think I've got a webinar that I've talked about where I'm going to be doing um, or showing everybody how to build their own GIS database for free, just using AutoCAD NAP or Civil 3D. First place I always like to start is this an SDF file. That's Autodesk's version of a shape file, and it's how you can build your own spatial database. So I can export this directly as an SDF file. Here's something that's relatively new. If I'm in an office and I've connected to, say, an, an Esri server, the uh, uh, Arc SDE server, one of those, or, or an Oracle database, I can now take this information and I can push it straight out into that FDO connection. So one of the things I used to show in class is if I was hooked up to a connection over here, I would have to right-click it and add these objects in one at a time, and even if I did, none of the attribute information would go with me. Well, that's changed. Now we can do that. Instead, I'm going to go in here to the Map 3D export. Program says, what type of file do I want? So obviously, I'm going to want an Esri shape file. And where do I want to put it? What do I want to call it? I'm just going to call it water. And then you just have to fill in the dialog boxes. It's just if you've uh, never done this before, I'll run you through it pretty quickly. First thing you have to do is tell it what type of object now. Unlike SDF files or AutoCAD drawings, shape files can only contain one type of object at any one time. So that means if I've got a block, it would be a point, polygon, close objects, text, or lines. What objects do I want to select? I want to select, um, say, all of them or all of them on a specific layer. I could say, oh, okay, only give me all the objects on a certain layer. And then the fun part, the data. I'm going to select which attributes that I want. Now, as you see in here, I've got the object data, and I can choose which object data tables that I want, or I can get even more picky in here and say, I want to include this object data table, but maybe not that one value, so I can uncheck or check them at will. But here's the other nice thing, is I can actually throw in AutoCAD properties as well. So if somebody says, yeah, that object data table is all really good, but maybe I want the uh, layer name, or I want the color of the object, or the angle, or something else, I can throw in any AutoCAD property that I want. Okay, once I've done that, the program is going to say, okay, here's the information. Are you sure? Currently, my drawing is set up at a particular known coordinate system. When I do the export, I can export it and convert the coordinate system to something else. So let's say that I'm using state plane and I'm about to give it to somebody, and they say, no, we want it UTM. I'm going to give this to CDOT. They want it UTM, or they want it their own coordinate system. I can do that right here pretty quickly and easily. And if you're going to make a habit of doing this, taking your attribute information and your objects and giving it to somebody else, after you filled this out and tested it out once or twice, you want to come down here and hit Save. And that's just going to take all of your settings so that the next time you go into a drawing and say, oh, I really need to give this to CDOT. I can't remember exactly how I did it. Well, you come into this dialog box, you hit Load, and then you turn right around and hit OK and say, all right, I'm done. So I'm going to hit OK. There's the export process. Let's see what happened. So, and you always want to double check it, of course. So I'm going to come into my Edit My Shape Connection. I'm going to add that shape file in as a connection. And there it is. There's my water shape file. I'm going to hit Open, Connect, got the information. I'm going to say Add It to My Map, and close this. And now I can come in here and turn off my water layer. Whoops, wrong one. My water mains layer, and then there's my shape file. It's still got the text in there, but this is all part of the shape file now. So that if I grab this, it's going to say it's a map feature. And look, there's all of my attribute information that I decided to plug into it. So as long as I'm maintaining that 12-character uh, that limitation in there, I've got all of that extra information that I told the program I wanted to export. I've tested it out. All the data is there. So now I can just email somebody that shape file. Always remember, if you are going to share your information with somebody else, like export it into a shape file, then uh, especially with shape files, when, you're, when you do the export, I'm opening up a file over here, and I'm going to show it to you. So when you do the export, remember, shape files are not files, a single file. It is made up of all of these files. You don't necessarily need to give somebody all of those files. There's a couple of them that yeah, we don't really care about, like the CPG and this index. You don't really care about those two. They're not going to use them anyway. 
But the important ones, if you're going to export as a shape file that you want to give somebody, are going to be those four right there. The projection file, the shape, the SHX, etc. So sharing your information, I'm building up my own AutoCAD drawing. I've got all of these layers, I've got all of this extra information, and now I can go ahead and share it with somebody. I can export it as I just showed you to a shape file. Or if I wanted to start building my own database, I can start plugging all of this into an SDF file, and that SDF file becomes my one main database. I could do that for all the projects that my company has worked on, or if I'm in a, uh, a county agency, I can build this SDF file up as uh, this is all of my utilities for the entire county or for the entire city or what have you. Um, Autodesk likes talking about the Las Vegas Valley Water District. They started off with AutoCAD Map building their database and they started off with an SDF file. The, uh, one of their original SDF files was over two gigabytes in size, a two gigabyte file. And they had no trouble with it. It wasn't getting corrupt at all. Multiple people could get into it at the same time. They could all do their pretty color-coded maps. So think about that. If you want to start building up your own GIS database, you can start with AutoCAD objects. Lines, arcs, circles, and text, just like you're doing right now. You start with all your drawing. You start adding in attribute data to it. And then when you want to really get carried away, take this to the next level, you can export that as an SDF file, turn right around, reattach the SDF file, and I don't really need the drawing anymore. All of my editing can be done to the SDF file. I've got all the same features that you see that I've got with just my AutoCAD objects. Again, the, the downside with the SDF file obviously is that I need AutoCAD Map or Civil 3D in order to see it, in order to do my real pretty color coding and all of that. People with uh, plain AutoCAD wouldn't be able to see that. Okay, so we started with back up the attributes, what they are. So the, the technical term is it's called object data, but it's basically just adding in attribute values to any object inside my drawing. Just like block, block attributes, any object inside my drawing. The limitations, I gotta stress this, I uh, can't go on to proxy objects, and the probably the two biggest ones are the first one and the last one. It has to be to any AutoCAD object, lines, arcs, circles, and text. Um, and that you do need Map 3D or some version of Map 3D in order to work with it. Now, earlier when we gave you the poll, said what version of Map or Civil 3D are you working on, most people answered at least 2011 or later. Uh, I think well, a couple of you answered maybe earlier than 2011. Don't worry. The features that I just showed you have been around since uh, the program first came out, and that was with AutoCAD 14. So any one of you will have these features. You'll be able to use them. How you find them may be a little bit different based on what version that you're in, but those features, the object data, editing it, doing the export, everybody's going to have that. Then lastly, I talked a little bit about what can you use this for. Sure, adding in these attributes is great, and being able to plug in extra data is great, but what good is it? Well, you can do your own, and I wish I could have showed you that, but that does really work, the, the pretty color uh, theme maps. You can add those in there for theme mapping your AutoCAD drawings, and you don't even need to worry about putting objects on different layers. The program takes care of all the color coding for you. Um, you've got the labeling, so I can plug this in as text. I can use multiple label types and add this in as text. And unlike plain AutoCAD lines are, or on plain AutoCAD text or plain AutoCAD block attributes, these things will update automatically if the object changes. You saw how easy it was to um, just grab those objects and copy and paste any one of those objects into a different drawing. So if somebody says, yeah, I want to have this object data and I want you to be able to share it with me, just copy paste one or two of those objects into a different drawing. We're kind of wrapping up here, so and I'm looking over there, it's what, quarter after. So we've got about another 15 minutes of time that it's allocated to this, so this is definitely a good time to open up for any questions. I think everybody's been pretty quiet seeing this, but if you've got a question now, it would definitely be uh, the time to ask about this. Uh, we have a few folks uh, raising their hands, and, and I believe we might be able to turn on the mics, but if you can uh, type in 
your question, that would be great. We did uh, get one yeah. come we in. We don't want to turn on the mics because we've got, what do we got, almost 30 oh, of these. Yes. So if we, if we turned on your microphones and everybody had mics on their computers or their laptops, and it would be a cacophony. <laughs> I've been waiting to use that word. Okay, so Sean's asked, good question, Sean, will regen work instead of update attributes? Answer to that question is no. I'm afraid not. Um, if I just grab an object and I want that information to go along with it and I type in regen, nothing happens. Because what the program's really got to do when you use the update attributes is, is it's going to erase this one, put a new one at the dead center of that line, and push it over. But that's a good question. Okay, we've got a couple others. That's another one that came in here. Uh, could you show us how to use something other than characters? Something other than characters. <laughs> well, Julie, I was trying to, but the bleeding pipe size thing, I swear this was working just the other day. And I don't know why this isn't working. Um, but these values are not character values as far as the pipe diameter. So um, let me go into editing this theme. So those are a range of numeric values. So I think I've got, uh, but I, and I always mix the two of them up, integers or reals, uh, whichever one um, has decimal places in it. So what I did was for that, uh, for the pipe sizes, I put it in as, an, I think, an integer. And then I tell the program, all right, I want you to pull off all, my, all these as numeric values so that I can break them up. And as you see here, what you can do is you can say, okay, if this value is 3 or less, or if this is from 3 to 6, or if this is from 6 to 10, then what I'm doing here is I'm basically doing uh, math operations on those. So rather than having characters, I've got uh, the, the numeric values in there. Right. Another question, uh, is there an easy way to find the total line lengths? Is there an easy way to find the total line lengths? So if I wanted the total of all the 3 inch or something along those lines, um, no, not really, not without doing a topology, and topologies aren't necessarily easy. But boy, that is a really good question and a really good uh, wish list to have on there, uh, Stacy. And, and the way that we could do it, just to give you kind of a quick background is, uh, one of the things that I was showing you is how we could query, and I said I want to query this drawing based on all the, the water lines. Well, I can edit that query and say I want to um, uh, query everything based on the water lines that are 3 inch. And then what I could do from there is I could go into my Map Explorer and build a quick topology out of that. And a topology is just going to tell me, uh, link all of these lines together, and it's just going to give me a total line length of all of those. So it's kind of a couple step process, not an easy way of doing it necessarily, but uh, there is there are methods that you can use to get that information. Um, another way of doing that rather than that is just doing uh, uh, the AutoCAD attribute extraction. But either way, what I've got to do is I've got to start with the display manager and query the drawing and say, look, out of this drawing, I only want you to show me the objects where this says three inches or where um, that is PVC as opposed to DIP. We actually had someone uh, send in a comment about that, Warren. I'm not sure if you see that, but uh, Andy here mentioned that you can use Excel to open the DBF uh, file after export, determine total line lengths from Excel. That's a good point. I never thought about that, Andy. Thanks. Because the DBF is just a, a real, real old DBase file, and I think you can break into that. Now, I, now having said that, though, great idea, Andy. Um, you do not want to do that on the original DBF file. You always want to make a backup copy and do that on the backup copy because uh, when you export a shape file, the program does a couple of weird things to the DBF file so that Esri can read it, but it's still a DBase file that you can open up in Excel. You don't want to open it up in Excel because then Microsoft is going to try to do some kind of weird conversion and it'll break it and Esri won't be able to see it. But that's a really good point. I never thought about that. So thanks, Andy. Thanks for sending it over. Uh, another question here. How do you enter theme mapping, not editing an existing one? How do you enter the theme mapping, not editing an existing one? Okay. Uh, so once I've done my uh, query, so I told the program that I wanted to add the drawing data, and I did a, uh, I can do a query current information. And that's basically all this was, was uh, doing the... Uh, doing the query, I can come into here just by right-clicking that layer. I can try to do this here real quick. And I can right-click the layer of the water lines that I brought in, and I can say, hey, I want to build a theme. 
So, hey, let's see if this works, since we've got an extra couple of minutes. So I'm going to do a range of numeric values. The program says, where do I want to obtain them from? I'm doing this pretty quick, folks. Uh, I want to do the water mains. It's going to be the size. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to read the data. And then the program says, OK, how many ranges do I want? I think I had five ranges. And then I'm going to hit find ranges. So I think those are the values that I had there. I know this is going pretty quick, but you can run through this in the help file, or I can uh, help you out by doing some online training if, if that's what you want. So now that I've got those lines in there, I'm going to say I want to ramp it, and I think I use the rainbow ramp. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I've got the rainbow ramp in there, and I've even got the legend, as you see in here. I oh, see, I built a new one. The new one worked. I should have started by doing that. And there I go. You know, in just a couple of moments, I've got AutoCAD objects color-coded with that theme. So all you've got to do is start by querying the drawing and then building a theme. And I don't know why that one isn't working. It's evil. But uh, now, while I've got this on here, for those of you who are going to be goofing around with this a little bit, you're going to get really very, very confused when you're playing with this. Because if I grab this and I look at it, it is still an AutoCAD line. And I want everybody to just take two seconds and please look at the top where it says color. And the color is by layer. And the layer is cyan, but the color of that object is red. Okay, this is where MAP is overriding what AutoCAD is doing. So MAP is painting the objects with a color AutoCAD can't tell. So again, if somebody with plain AutoCAD opens this up, uh, really all they're going to see, get that back in there, no, that's working. Uh, all they're going to see is the cyan lines that we saw originally without the theme. Uh, so not to get confused, this painting that's going on is a feature of AutoCAD MAP. Okay, just been showing the data table. That's great. Yep, so that question, we had a question here. I just have been showing the data, or a comment. I've just been showing the data table and exporting to CSV. And this goes back to the question of, is there an easier way uh, to uh, find yeah. the total line length? Yeah, the, now, uh, one thing uh, to mention, and I see, what, or Stacy, where you're going with this, the data table. If you have exported this, and you're exactly right, if you've exported this as a, a shape file, and I've reattached the shape file, then I can come up here and hit the table and see what she's talking about there. And then there's all of my information. So I've got all of the size, I've got the type, I've got all of this. Now one of the attributes during the export process, you might remember, one of the attributes that I can export would have been an AutoCAD property. And the AutoCAD property that I would want to send out is the length. So, yeah, the objects obviously would have their length, but what if I wanted to export this out as a CSV file or just do some quick uh, conversions? I would export the length out so that the length became one of the values inside the table. So by using the shape file, then you're exactly right. I could come in here under my options. I could say I want to select all. Once I selected all of these, I could come in here and say export, export it as a CSV file. And that's a really good trick. So thank you very much for that, Stacy. Another uh, comment or question and comment here. I have the 2010 version, assuming of MAP 2010, uh, so I do not have the create, annotate, etc. ribbons. Well, you, you've got the ribbons. I just don't know where exactly the ribbons would be, but you do have the ribbons. Um, if you look at your workspaces, you want to make sure that you're not in the Map Classic workspace, uh, that you are in, and I think it was called something along the lines of planning and analysis or geospatial or something like that, uh, but the ribbons should be there. Now, if um, you're using, and actually while I'm talking, uh, if you're using Map Classic, it'll be in a pull-down menu. Oh, darn. I'm sorry. I stopped at 2011, everybody. So I can't show you what 2010 actually would look like, Charity. Um, but rest assured, it is there. It will be in one of the ribbons. I'm just not sure which one. Uh, starting with 2012, Autodesk changed kind of the naming values of the workspaces and some of the ribbons because of the new features that they added in. Um, probably the best thing to do, if you want to find it, back into that. If you want to find it, you're going to hit the application menu, which is the big A up at the top left, 
And then you'll just type in something along the lines of object data. Okay, that's all you need to do is come up here. This is one of my favorite tools of learning where, where commands are when you switch over to ribbons. So you just use this tool right here. Start typing in what it is that you want. And then the program will tell you, oh, it's uh, over in the ribbon tab called create, or it's in the ribbon tab called tools, or something like that. And then you're going, well, I don't feel like looking for it. Well, you don't have to. If I want to define object data, I'm just going to click this, and it's going to kick me right into the command. So if I don't want to go searching for it right then and there, I'm just going to use that tool set right there. All right, we are now coming close to the very end. If there are no other questions, or while people are thinking up the last few questions, we're going to do a little bit of the, the housekeeping that we normally do, so the upcoming Cat 1 events. Yeah, so uh, as, as you can see on the screen there, we, Memorial Day, we will not be open, and I imagine most people will not. But we also, uh, next week, we do have a survey field to finish class, which is a newer version of our field to finish that we had done uh, some time ago, or our, or our survey within Civil 3D class we had done uh, some time ago. Uh, this class will actually be a three-day class now, and the uh, beginning part of the session uh, will be uh, more of a live interactive where we'll actually uh, virtually con uh, collect data on survey equipment. Do you have any more to add to that, Warren? Yeah, we've got a couple of experts from Frontier Precision here in the Denver area who are um, they are going to have some simulation software. You guys, you never know what the weather's going to be like when we have one of these, so uh, it would be nice to have everybody go out into the field. But we're going to have some simulation software that's going to uh, simulate what it looks like to have one of those really cool, expensive handheld data collectors. And they're going to be using mostly Trimble equipment, so it'll be modeled after that. But it doesn't matter if you've got a Sokia system or a Leica. Honestly, the newer systems, they all look alike. So these guys are going to show you on your equipment how you can add in the extra attributes, how you know the best practices for doing your field collection, for doing your line work code sets. Uh, the reason that we changed this up is that we've been teaching the survey class for some time, and the surveyors who come in for the class always ask, yeah, this is really nice once I get it into the office, but how am I supposed to get it into the office? When I'm out there, how do I code this? How do I set this up? And, you know, we'd love to spend about $30,000 on survey equipment so that we could show you, but we're not really going to do that. So we partnered with these guys from Frontier Precision, and they're going to come in during the class, and they're actually going to show you best practices of how to do that. So thanks, Warren. Thanks for adding that in. So, again, that will be the first part of the class, and the remaining, I believe, two days will be strictly uh, on Civil 3D. And the Civil 3D portion that will be within this class are for surveyors. So uh, they don't have to do the Civil 3D fundamentals and then come take this class. Uh, so we do have a separate civil class for uh uh, different types of engineers or people working with water, and then this would be strictly for surveys. So definitely keep that in mind. Give us a call uh, to get registered for that. And if, and if you think that you might be interested, uh, you might want to give us a call right after this webinar is over because we're uh, we're we're on kind of the, the cutting edge of whether or not we're going to host the class or not if we if we can't get enough people in here. And if not, we're doing it. We'll, we'll begin uh, offering this, I believe, every month. I think so. Yeah. So uh, that so that's good. good. And then, as uh, Warren was saying earlier, our customer appreciation day. Uh, will be in June 15th, and if you would uh, pay attention to the email there, we notice we have a slight misspelling, which I think you guys would know what it is. Just take that out, and if you could just email uh, to us uh, oh, wow. and uh, and register. Well, I, you know, that's the worst part about PowerPoint. Is PowerPoint doesn't have a good spell checker. <laughs> So uh, either way, uh, just what would a webinar be if we didn't have a misspelling? Uh, that's a good, good, good question. But uh, feel, as soon as you can, give us those emails. We need to get a head count so we can uh, have an idea how many people are showing up to get the food order. This is going to be a great event. Uh, as as most of you know, you may have received the invite. Uh, we decided not to hold uh, this app, this particular event in a uh, fifteen hundred square foot room. We're actually going to have a much larger space. Uh, so we do anticipate quite a lot of people uh, joining us this time uh, due to our uh, folks that will be hosting uh, us this event with us this time. So please send us an email, your name, company name, uh, all that good information. We'll get you registered in. And, uh, and we, we will be sending out that. additional information, like I said here shortly. Um, we, we're, we were a little bit behind the power curve of this because we're in the process of uh, building up a new website, which we're hoping to launch next week. 
uh, but this is kind of causing problems with what we're doing with the old website. So we, we are going to have a landing page on our old website that's going to talk about this, talk about who's going to be there, our guest speakers, where it's going to be. It's going to be at Stonebrook Manor, um, you know, and, and a lot about it so that everybody can take a peek at it. We just, unfortunately, because of what we're doing with our website, we're kind of a little bit behind the curve on this one. But we're going to be doing email blasts and a whole lot of good stuff. So, so keep your ears to the ground and send us an email, uh, like Lauren said, at Customer Appreciation Day so we can get you on there. And then we'll send you additional information as, as we get it out. Sounds good. Yeah, and, and as uh, Warren mentioned, the Stonebrook Manor is where we'll be hosting this event. And it is just right around the corner from our office. So it is, if you're familiar where we're at in Thornton, it's uh, just a, literally a couple blocks away. So, and if you do decide to go uh, take a look at where you know what is the Stonebrook Manor, you're, you might see that it looks like it's really geared for weddings. And yes, it is. And but it is an event center. A lot of people uh, that we've talked to have gone to that website and said, "Oh, I've got to be at the wrong website because it's all about <laughs> weddings." But it's a beautiful place, let me tell you. So this is going to be a really good event this year. So we look forward to seeing everyone there. And again, uh, as soon as you can, uh, shoot us the email, and we'll get you registered in and. And look forward to seeing everyone on June 15th. All right. And with that, we're going to wrap up. Uh, no more questions. If you do have any additional questions, I forgot to put, uh, Lawrence, your information on there. So I'm going to actually back all the way up here. There it is. Okay. So um, please contact Lawrence Vaughn if you've got any questions about what you saw here today. It's lawrence.vaughn at cad-one.com. Uh, so send them any questions that you might have or follow up on here. Or if you've got any ideas of what you'd like to see in a future webinar, we always like getting your ideas. With that, we want to thank everybody, a whole bunch of you, for coming here today. Thank you all for joining us. And we look forward to uh, having you come up to our Customer Appreciation Day and visit us on more of these uh, presentations that we're having. Thanks, everyone.